first show back after the weekend, first show back after an IRL meeting between myself and Nez. It should be it should be a joyous occasion. This should be a great day. We should have all been looking forward to this. But I have some tragic news. Tragic news that just came across my desk right here. First and foremost, it says, I hear Nez Daniel, the medium goat on underdog of player, have hereby resigned from the show due to my ineligible and egregious lineup creation on April 15th that somehow won $550. I hereby have resigned from the Bad Bros. I, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I, I think it's warranted. I genuinely think it's warranted after this guy breaks all the cardinal rules and somehow makes 100 buy-ins last night. How the hell, Nez, do you feel about yourself right now? I mean, I'm not proud, but also you told me you were going to fire. I was getting fired. Now you're forging my resignation. Like, what's – this is you're, – you're breaking, you're breaking some laws here. Uh <laughs> Yeah, no, not 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 proud of that one getting home. I mean, it's so funny. You like if you were to tell tell somebody like, hey, here's what's gonna happen in the game. Here's the score. It's gonna be like nine to three. Mariners, like, all right, give me a Reds onslaught with with the Mariners pitcher. Actually, <laughs> uh, that's what I want in, in a in a Mariners blowout. In a Mar- yeah, that's so, hysterical. So ridiculous, man. But that was just like that was the first uh anti chalk never dodger slate we've had all season so yeah it's good to see you get home yet, it looked like it, it, yeah. was, it looked like it should have been yeah like because uh astros i mean i just did i think i did 10 of them while lying on the floor in the airport there and i i just onslaughted royals like an idiot but um i i, I think it was dodgers astros braves basically made up 20 ish positions of the ADP of the top 36. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's it, just it, an evergreen reminder that like, yo, 10 game slate MLB or whatever it was. Was it 10, 11? Nine, I think nine. There we go. Perfect. Split the difference. I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, that, that, no, that's, uh, it's hilarious. But for those of the, those who didn't catch the reference and, or see it in the deposit kingdom discord, I got, I got to just, I got to oust you here as for the 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 new meta in baseball to stack against your own pitcher and be on the wrong side of the stack and still get home incredible stuff and of course you know i finally t- take some ellie you know some shares in ellie and he puts puts up a whole bagel for me the only one in the lineup like go figure go figure but that's all right we're you know, I'm losing that. I'm losing that war. I'm, I'm, I think I'm already ready to capitulate on <laughs> that. But uh, I mean, John, you're back from Texas and you mm. wasted. I mean, like you, you, you take the boy out of Texas, but you can't take Texas out of the boy rocking the camo with the American flag lettering. That's just I mean, you, you, so you're this is in the, the States, huh? This is my brand new Chase Elliott jersey from the race on Sunday. And on Saturday night, we went to Texas Live and watched UFC 300. And we didn't have any action going in whatever. We were trying to put in some pick em stuff, but it had already closed for the last two fights or whatever. So then I was like, okay, I just need some action to like the boys. I was like, who wants to bet buy anybody a race shirt tomorrow of your choosing for the other guy? So that was our bet for the main event. So I won the bet, which means I was the recipient of the shirt, but my cousin got to choose which shirt he bought me. And wow. this this is the sweet beauty. But the, 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 the beautiful thing about it, Nez, is he bought it for me before the race, and then Chase Elliott went on to win said race at a racetrack he's he's not very good at. So it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was fun. Well, I mean, what kind of – how are you not good on a certain – race track is this, is this like f f1 where it's it's more than just like a left turn how are you not how are you, how are you not gonna be good at texas motor speedway okay i'm gonna mansplain racing to you right quick there's three types of well there's four main types of tracks in nascar they got a couple road courses now where they despite popular belief they go left and right on those ones so certain guys are good on the road tracks 
Then other guys are good on the intermediate style ones, which is what Texas is, which is like a mile and a half oval kind of thing, right? So it's got four corners, but then it's got like a little jetty in it and and whatever. So that's another type. Then there's the short track, which are like half miles, smaller, smaller, that take like 19 seconds to get around and you just lay the bumper on one another and it's literally like bumper cars around. And then there's the big boys, the super speedways that are like the Daytonas, the Talladegas, the whatever, where it's like packed racing where like all 40 cars stay in a pack and they just kind of like ride wind off one another and lap take like two minutes long. So each of those four styles, certain guys are better on, on each okay. of them than the other. And like Chase's best style, he's kind of like a hybrid driver, but his best style is definitely not intermediate Texas. That's, that's, that's for sure. And that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Good for Chase. Yay. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was genuinely uh, curious. <laughs> yeah, we were just, yeah, big turn left guy. I am a big turn left guy. Um, GA, we will appease you tomorrow, my friend, because uh, I got to set the scene for the week ahead. We have uh, the definitive thought leaders in, in Underdog Puck in uh, the Morning Skate podcast joining us. So Moody and DJ Mitchell will be joining us on Off and on the Clock tomorrow. We'll do the full puck preview of the playoffs. Playoffs are looking electric right now. Uh, Detroit Red Wings had a really big comeback last night. They were down three. They scored four unanswered, one in regulation, one in overtime to keep their chances alive. Uh, but I think if Washington wins tonight, the playoff bracket is set. And that's kind of like the last piece of the puzzle is the Eastern Conference there. So a lot of moving, you know, pieces going on there we'll uh we'll do some fun stuff i know they got some game stuff planned for us to embarrass our puck knowledge and then they'll do some real ball knowers or puck knowers uh knowledge to to get us through the zambonis and we'll do zamboni and pete will be with us that'll be awesome uh thursday the slate is for everything is egregious uh there's five baseball games and they're all spread out weird and uh there's no hoops games that day and i think there's no puck or it's silly season puck so like we'll we'll kind of we'll we'll figure something out for thursday might turn the clock back and do like big board or something like that and then probably do a hybrid of baseball and nba on the friday and then the following week there we're going to set the stage for the nfl draft uh irons and fire as uh, as some of us would say yeah so we'll, we'll we'll see what happens with that but we'll get people uh set up right for nfl draft next week early next week um anything i missed us no i i don't think so perfect um we have to uh before okay two things before we talk hoops does we have to pour one out for iq of the night actually being iq who was not iq so nez joined uh me and my boys for the mavs game on Friday night, and we put together some sharp AF pick. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, we were so far ahead of the news, and we went four for five. And the only thing we we wanted to make sure we got it to a twenty x. We had to pick like a lock from somewhere else, and that lock was IQ. And we had two four out of fives that IQ foiled on uh, on both of them. So never IQ. Can we say never IQ? I, I never, never IQ. It's always IQ. He just, you know, it's it's the end of the season. We gotta we give him we give him a pass. He's still he's still our boy. But man, we were dialed, dialed on that on that pick'em. Uh, I felt so bad, man. The the boys are really counting on us. I mean, that was my first time really being in a setting where like with dudes that just really wanted to sweat, and they're just like, "Tell me what to play." Like, okay, yeah. got it. And he's like, "Who else should I play?" I'm like, uh, do do him. And then I and like. <laughs> just like all right cool and it was it was just awesome and those guys and those are the least degenerate of my friends <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man dude. good stuff man yeah yeah that game was that game was tough to watch like it was nice it was nice to see nez it was nice to be there it was nice to be hanging out uh the actual basketball game itself was was not the best <laughs> Ooh, buddy yeah no i didn't i mean that was that was a struggle that was yeah. a struggle Although it was fan appreciation night and on the Jumbotron, it just kept flashing MFFL, which was Mavs fan for life. 
And I just kept saying MILFs over and over again. Every time <laughs> you I sure stopped. did. You <laughs> sure did. Every time. Oh, man. Um, yeah, yo. Oh, of course. Raise hail, praise Dale, of course. But ordered badge, bros, shirt. Love to see yeah, it. Yeah, I'm on it. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, Chipsy alluding to here, if you are not a member, I'm, I'm seeing tons of badges in the chats. And I appreciate the hell out of them badges I'm seeing in the chats right now. But if you are not a member, join up, hit that five bucks a month, less than less than one daytime diamond or turn Tuesday that are now a seven dollar price point due to uh, Nez's genius. But uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, join up for that because what Chip is tongue in cheek, you know, saying you know, watch an elite dance stream. It is, it's the best one out there. I'm not gonna lie, it is, and you know, we're gonna try our best today but it was a very very good stream i was very impressed with chip's knowledge and chip man seven inside the top seven of the last three playoff contests regardless of sport dude's a savant i mean they last right just an absolute monster in the playoff best ball streets it's it's impressive man it's i don't know anybody else that's that's putting up those kind of numbers Mm -hmm. and and a stake and claim the, to winning the Zamboni here too. He doesn't even need off and on the clock tomorrow. He's already staking claim. I'm gonna need off and on the clock tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, Bindles ordered up a Badge Bros hoodie. Love it, man. Appreciate that. And our guy knew me out here gifting Badge Bros memberships. So hopefully, a lucky recipient in the chat right there gets geared up with that. Oh, here you go. John C was the recipient. Good looks. Knew me. There you go. So now you can go ahead and watch that dance stream with Chipsy in the members only. Beautiful stuff there. Um, Nez, last thing before we jump into actual hoops related content was a little shout out to some of the OGs on the top of the leaderboard last night. We yeah. see your name. We see we see Chipsy. We see Jordan Staples out there. We see Ryan Baker Staples out around here. Uh, but like I'm looking at this thing and I'm going T box and just bread chop in the first place. This looks like 2001 on the platform of the people to me, does it not? Yeah, isn't that funny? Like, yeah. total, total flashbacks there, you know, just like King State Kings reclaiming their their top, their spot at the top. Uh, it's awesome. I, I still wish just Brett would just like say, Hey, like, you know, mm. I mean. I feel like he's, I don't see him around as much anymore. I feel like he's more of like I think baseball and, and he does football. I think right, but um, yeah, a little bit, but yeah, baseball's it was definitely always a baseball. Yeah, yeah, it was always baseball. But he he would poke his head in the NBA streets now and then. Um, yeah, but but not as prevalent as he once was. I mean, I I don't like to talk demotions on the hashtag list, oh. but um, he's in demotion territory just in terms of some of the volume we've been seeing. But there are a lot of guys with some promotion. I, I'll give a sneak peek because at some point we are going to be doing the hashtag list episode. I am I am suggesting right now A. Rosen, Allen for Mount Rushmore. Yeah. I mean. No argument? I, no, not at all. Yeah. Allen is <laughs> Allen's a force right now. Yeah. Allen is... Allen is killing it in every single sport. Every night I look up there, regardless of slate size, regardless of whatnot. I I, I think A. Rosen deserves some serious consideration for, for the Mount Rushmore. Yeah, being multi-sport too definitely helps with that. But yeah, it's he's got more first places than like most people that I can think of off the top of my head. It's 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 insane. Yeah, it, it's been great. Uh one other thing, just like macro while we're talking about it. Go check out that tweet that both Nez and I retweeted and the Badge Bros count retweeted from John Boy Beats. Just created some sweet graphs with his lineups and his results over the year. And I mean, just full transparency from a very talented player on this site, but really like really illuminates the day-to-day swings of these contests because like his most popular result on a night-to-night basis is somewhere in the minus 100 to minus 300 range. So if you're I know. getting upset and you're beating yourself up for those ones every single night, like you, you can't, you just got to turn the page. Right. And I know maybe not everyone's bankroll equipped to the, to the level in which uh, John boy beats might be, but like the, this is the variance associated with this game. And that's, it's a conversation we haven't had in a while on this channel, but we used to have a ton is yeah. they, they look like $5 games. They look like $7 games. They're not, you mm-hmm. know, like these are, 
you know, multiple hundred dollar games each night by the amount of entries that guys are getting in and the swings reflect that, right? Yeah. I was showing uh, my wife, Bria, those, uh, the, the, the charts that he was making too. And she wants to help me make, make some, make some charts too for, for my, my trackers that I have. Cause I just have right now just Perfect. a spreadsheet. I don't have any graphs or anything, but I was just showing her. I'm like, like this, this guy, like, you know, I, I play against like all the time, similar results to me. Like, like look at how often, like he loot, like he lost money, like right. ju- just on the raw, like one or zero binary outcome of the night. Like, like it, it's tough, you know? And you really, it, it's such like a mental battle to just like stay with it. If you're mm-hmm. in the middle of a swing. And like you said, it, it like depending on the volume, I mean, like there's, there's a price range for everybody to play on here, of course, but like, you know, depending on the volume, you know, you really do have to have a, a certain, you know, you got to be smart with the bankroll and everything. And uh, it, it, it's just like a mental battle, just like a testament to like, you know, how severe some of these swings can be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, paid sanity here, bankroll management. He's everything. Uh, shout out to Grill Belichick, one that, uh, you know, I haven't been paying a ton of a ton of attention in the streets over the course of the weekend there, but I did see the screenshot in which took home the after dark last night. So big shouts there as well. Love to see members of the community finding success. Uh, Jeff asking about the NFL weekly winners, Numi providing some context that that's probably a May slash June contest, but uh, just thinking ahead, NFL draft next week, you know, draft ends Sunday maybe Monday BBM, maybe, I don't know, just using historical data as a reference point. I, I think we're going to be ready for the, for the big one over the course of, uh, of next weekend. Yeah. It's insane how, how close that is. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's mind boggling. I can't believe it's, it's all right. It, we're, we're, we're mere like weeks away from BBM season and man. Yeah. I, I'm just excited for these rookies to have some like goddamn landing spots like that. Right? I just I, stop I, speculating I, on where they're going to be and, uh, and start reacting. Yes, man. Like, you know, salute to the people that have the edge in the big board. Like if I had an edge, I'd be maxing it. But like, I, I, I'm in there just cause like I, I need, I, you know, I want to get familiar with like how pre-draft landscapes are going, but like, mm-hmm. man, it, it's um admittedly just like a game that I know good and damn well. I do not have an edge. <laughs> in, in this, this pre draft stuff, man. I need some landing spots. I barely have, I don't even have an edge in regular basketball. So, what am I talking about? Yeah, th- this too, Michael, where it's like, I'm tired of 50 mock drafts every sports channel does every day. 100%, man. 100%. It's just yeah, time it, to it, get it's there. It's a rough time for content if you're, if you're football, but, you know, salute to the people grinding. It's, uh, we're finally going to have some tangible data here soon. So, you mm-hmm. know, the, the, the wait's almost over. Well, I was cracking up because like, obviously we're a super niche community and like the people in which we follow for football knowledge, like Hayden and Josh and, and uh, Pete and Pat and Gretch and like that little community, right? Like this little bubble is just so, so much more dialed than like what you get on like cookie cutter ESPN. Like, yeah, Mel Kuyper's so tapped in. Mel Kuyper does all his stuff, but like just the comps and like some of the stuff you get from that, like I was howling because we were at you know texas live watching the masters on that big screen and then espn's in the bottom of the corner and he's given like these hall of fame comps to like every guy that comes across the board and i'm just like man like bo nix comp josh allen like what the fuck like yeah come on be for real be for real no it, it is like truly i think maybe if people don't understand it yet then maybe they you know they will very very soon but like the content that we do consume like you said like within like this bubble with the people that we like 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 pat and everybody else like it is so much better than like mainstream coverage it is it's crazy it's actually crazy. the way that like yeah. things have like changed in in that regard that like the best info you can get is like the people that you that, that that are like at an arm's length away from everybody. I mean, like everybody that does this good stuff too is very accessible, very friendly, very willing to like engage. It's it's just it's crazy, man. That is like the best info you can get for mm-hmm. for this stuff right now. Yeah, actually, while we're on it, shout out Crane, baby girl over the weekend. Love to see. Yeah, it. that's awesome. Yeah, cool. Um, all right, let's uh, yeah, 
can't watch any normie sports stuff anymore. It's true, Chipsy. It's true. Like, I feel the same way, man. Like, I can't just, like, enjoy what's on ESPN unless it's the game itself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they, they play to their audience. Uh, 100%, Michael. 100%. Um. All right. Yeah. Hey, yo, actually, this is embarrassing that we get uh, a four-man Seattle one there. And this was a five-man? Yeah, five-man Seattle one here. And John Boy's nowhere near the top of the leaderboard. I mean, this is an egregious miss on my behalf here. I mean, that, that I'm has clearly, to like go bad, right? That, that, I'm that, clearly that. no longer true to the blue, man. This is crazy. All I had to do was spend seven bucks and push the plane on like Hannah Goat. Like, are you kidding me? Dude, it's too easy. I, I, you know I, what's I, you know what's messed up is if you look at my a tenth place team, um, mm-hmm. I think this was my Cal Raleigh team. I had another Seattle onslaught, but mine was like I I was like the same but different. I was see I was unique because like no one was drafting Cal Raleigh. No one wanted uh, Cal Raleigh. And uh, do, yeah. were you watching the game? No, no, I was. Oh, dude! Still. Like eighth inning, he had just a fly out like to left center, and I thought it was gone. And uh, that would have that would have made me a really really happy camper uh, Ooh, had, yeah. had it had it gone out. But uh, and I love it that he paired it with Perez oh, too. I guess Chipsy had Cal. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Of course, it's with Martin Perez, who also like clearly screwed me here. <laughs> no, no regrets yes this is uh this is this is nothing new to me yes i am i'm a fraud we know this we know this oh hey you go john said he got got the win in the cycle with a blanco julio yo shouts Winners all nice. over. Man. yeah love to see it congratulations um all right nez uh should we start with the four gamer or should we start with the macro playoff picture and dance uh let's maybe do the four gamer because this is go you know it locks tonight okay let's do the four gamer first uh on actually i can do ah never mind okay i'll do it like this uh well you know platform of people's got the beautiful interface why go anywhere else right um all right lakers pals is the early game tonight um ad loki kind of still banged up brandon ingram coming back uh, from his long absence, he played the most recent game. This is a rematch of the exact same game that took place on Sunday in that one. Uh, and then we have the late night hammer tonight as Sacramento versus Golden State, kind of like the pace up, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no Herder still and no Malik Monk in that one. And then we have uh, the following day is Miami versus Philadelphia. Uh, still a Q tag on Terry Rozier. Hasn't played in, I want to say, seven or eight games. Something like that sound about right, Nez, with the neck? Yeah, it's it's been a while. Yeah, sounds sounds right there. And then we got uh, Atlanta at Chicago, which is pace up for it for Chicago, pace down for Atlanta. Uh, looks like we're going to get almost everyone in that one, except for potentially Jalen Johnson. I do not know. Has he been... He's already ruled out. Okay, cool. Yeah, just had to and, make sure. Uh, Io DeSumo is also questionable and hasn't played okay. um, in a while either. Yeah, because the last slate you and I talked through was the Io getting ruled out and we started drafting Caruso quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So okay. He's- Perfect. And then the one last thing I would add to that is Trey Young, minutes limit, slowly been worked up. 20, then 27, then 31, I think, in his most recent game. So kind of looks like they're ramping him up for this play in. Yeah, 31. There you go. So as we can see, I I think it's just easy to talk macro here. Uh, Winner of Pell's Lakers just moves in and plays the Nuggets. Loser of that game will play the winner of Kings Warriors tonight. And then on the other side of the equation, uh, Sixers and Heat. Winner of that goes in to play the Knicks. And then Bulls Hawks, winner of that will play the loser of the 7 8 game. So, yeah, any bold predictions macro there, Nez? Or are we going to steer clear of that? Um, I guess it'll kind of come out as we talk about this, the, the four game slate here. But uh, this okay. is this is going to be a really fun playoffs. Uh, is just, you know, the, the TLDR is uh, I'm excited. For, for this, I think, you know, I guess real quick, 
think Nuggets run the West. Um, East, I mean, obviously Celtics look strong, but I think the East is uh, it's definitely for the taking, I will say. Yeah, so we'll talk about the honest stuff when we get to the um, dance portion of, of there. But, like, I don't know. I put Hallie on the cover because I was like, Pacers, little pace up ball, run and gun. They might score enough points in a back and forth affair. Like if, if the Bucks and, and and Pacers go six games, they might score enough points to get some teams through. And uh, they're a team that not very many people were drafting two weeks ago. So I don't know. It's just thinking through a little bit of leverage there with Suns and Pacers, even though the likelihood of them, you know, winning multiple series is is very low. I was just kind of thinking through okay, these teams are going to be probably lower owned than than a lot of the other ones and all of a sudden have cleaner-ish paths than we ever thought they would, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely a very open East. Uh, I just hope that Bulls or Hawks don't find their way into that eighth seed. I mean, they have no business being in the playoffs. Like, if you don't have a – like, they should just forfeit the play tournament if you can't <laughs> – put up a winning record to fight your way for that eighth seed. That's just, that's egregious. This is the, the, the modern day basketball equivalent of the Seahawks hosting the saints at seven and nine when the saints were like 11 and four or whatever. The, well, what's the math there? 12 and four. Yeah. hundred percent. It's, yeah. it's a joke. <laughs> Um, all right, let's talk about the slate itself. I ripped a couple of, or I think I ripped one of this and a couple of the dance this morning just to refamiliarize myself here. Uh, AD legit kind of banged up. I mean, he's got the green in tag there. Uh, I believe the official injury report, I had them up earlier. He was listed questionable with back and back spasms. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is it anything to be concerned about? To, to kind of forfeit taking AD at two and maybe pushing LeBron over him. LeBron scored 80 fantasy points in one of those games that was not must win for them, but in one of those games that like, okay, this finally really means something to the Lakers to stay out of the bottom tier play-in game. This is basically a playoff game for them on Sunday, and he just kind of goes vintage LeBron. Uh, you know, macro thoughts on the front end of the draft board. Uh, definitely just taking 82. Uh, okay. I, I mean, definitely here the, the injury concerns there, but 80 is, is definitely two for me, but if somebody wanted to take LeBron too, you know, I'm not going to like freak out. It's, it's LeBron, mm-hmm. it's playoffs. It's a do or not do or die, but it's a very important game. So, I mean, one would expect LeBron to play really well. Um, but I think the, the, I mean, just in general, man, I know we're talking about the whole, the front side but like adp just like one to 36 is pretty damn good it's it's pretty okay. sharp i i will okay. say um but no no issues with the one two three of of these drafts personally oh, okay sounds good to me i mean i haven't uh i i find there's a couple spots that i like but they might be a little gal brainy i had one gal brainy take about the entire slate is the fact that two games are must win and two other games, they get like a second chance. So if there's any situation in which of those second chance teams, which would be, you know, Pels and Lakers on the one side, Sixers and and Heat on the other side, if one of them's blowing the doors off the other one, could we find ourselves to like some sneaky six round bench guys? I don't know. It's, it, it's a little gal brainy, but like, you know what I mean? Where it's like they're ready to shut it down a little bit early. Whereas, you know, Warriors and and Sacramento, even if they're down 20, Steph's still going to be in that ball game to have a glimmer of hope because they're not going to take their foot off the gas on their season. You don't have to go to the bench. You don't have to get to the bench, but like you can maybe take just, I mean, you just don't have to go that far down. Like if you think the Warriors are likely to go harder than just take like, Trace Jackson Davis or Chris Paul in the, you know, in the sixth. Right. Yeah. You know, just like take a warrior. Um, take Keon Ellis. Don't. Yeah. Don't be taking, you know, Dyson Daniels. <laughs> right. 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 Okay. Maybe I framed it too. I framed it wrong. Maybe by bench, maybe like sixth and seventh, man, like fringe consideration anyways, guys. Yeah. Maybe. 
<laughs> always looking for I love, a I love the scroll, gallery. Bro. It, it has to happen. It has to happen. I mean, always so looking for a reason to scroll. Has to. Um, let's talk about some of the guys in the middle tier that we think, you know, kind of mispriced that can be pushed up and or down. Uh, I think the Sabonis conversation is very interesting. You could sell me Sabonis at two today. You could sell me Sabonis at five today. What, where are you coming out? Uh, man, I like originally was thinking like Sabonis three. Okay. When I first like Over these, thinking about it from like a regular season slate. Like Sabonis would be three, and yep. I don't like. It feels kind of you know, it's fine because it's like playoff LeBron. But you know, we would be drafting Sabonis at three if this was the heart of the NBA season. So just find it interesting against the Warriors team that like is is vulnerable. Um, mm-hmm. you, 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 yeah, I. I I'm just like totally fine, pretty much like drafting at any point in the first round. Um, okay. Obviously, I'd rather have Embiid, uh, but you really cannot go wrong with, with that top four um, or and five, obviously with with Fox. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, who then? Because I, I think this next portion of the draft board gets really interesting. Because this yeah. is where you start getting a little takey, and you can get a little uh-huh. up, down, whatever. Uh, if we get Zion, the version of Zion, who is point Zion without uh, BI, had been in the past, he gets that higher usage role. He gets that. I think Zion should be the next pick off the board. That being said, I don't think we necessarily get that with BI back and what they've been doing with their center rotation right now with uh, Joe Val and Nance. Because I, we'll get to the Nance stuff because I think Nance is sneaky as shit in the sixth round right now that not enough people are boosting up. But uh, yeah, what do you like in this next little window? I mean, my heart tells me Zion. Like it's, right. it's like play like this is a brand new Zion in the playoffs against LA. Um, you know, I wanna I wanna ignore the like BI being back changing the role so badly. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I just want I just want Zion to just like put on an absolute vintage performance. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, DeRozan, I think is the, the logical number six pick, but would, I want to have more Zion than the field today though. Okay. And yeah. I, I'm kind of in lockstep that. with you there. Yeah. I mean, I, it, the, the reality is like at the six pick, like you get to have like, it's basically like you're taking two of these guys next, right? I mean, you're at the turn. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like I have to fade to Rosen to get to Zion. It's just probably going to be a lot of Zion and DeMar or paired together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause for me, it's Zion and and DeMar over, over Steph. But I mean, Steph against the Kings in the playoffs is definitely one to like, you know, not full fade. Yeah, as much as I want to fade Steph because it's like this Warriors is so spread out when everybody's healthy and blah, blah, blah. There's just a chance that they can go out and put up like 135 points and Steph just goes vintage Steph for like 45, 7, and 4. Like, you know, like that's just range of outcomes with Steph just like reminding everybody that he's Steph Curry in the playoffs. That's a scary fade. It is, man. It's a very scary fade. This isn't... This is like a dream matchup for, you know, for, for Steph in a do or die game against the Kings. Like he should be, he should go off. I think it's, yeah, it's, there's a reason why he's drafted over, over Zion, you know, in, in ADP. Mm-hmm. Like it just, it makes sense, but I don't know. I, I'm worried that this is like my biases, like creeping in and making me <laughs> go overweight Zion. Like I know I have a bias towards it, but. Um, right. Right. Damn man, it's a it's, it, it, this is it, it, it's a tough decision, but I am Zion over over Steph though. I think, yeah, I I think they need Zion to do what he was doing in order to have a chance. Like we don't have to go that far back in time. Like we saw a full series of Warriors Sacramento last year, and we know how fast and how high scoring those games can push. You're you right. Know? It's just like, yeah. Um, macro basketball mindset this 
Lakers versus Pels tonight. It, Lakers are obviously big. They they've been playing big. There's my favorite fade on the slate right now is D'Angelo Russell because we've seen this year after year with the Lakers in the postseason. Like you don't have to go very far to just be like he gets absolutely cooked on screen and rolls, and they just go, "That's enough. We need a defender in there." And that's why they went out and got Gabe Vincent. That's why they played Austin Reeves 38 minutes in all those postseason games last year. Um, yeah, we saw like Lakers do, you know, one night it was LeBron, one night it was AD, one night it was LeBron. And the only consistent was Austin Reeves outscoring D'Angelo Russell, despite their ADPs never reflecting that last year. Are you in lockstep with this take from me? I mean, it's it's definitely a problem, right? I mean it's it's definitely a problem but i don't know that i'm gonna fade d'angelo russell i kind of like d'angelo russell tonight i think they need him to score but Mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that terrence is right in the chat but i mean what do you say who would you rather face in a series nuggets or thunder like be for real wait who would you rather face nuggets or thunder in a series correct Oh, I'd rather face the Thunder for sure. And if you win, you're facing the Nuggets. Right. So I'm not saying we should be fading the Lakers or or, or, or this game entirely because both these teams are playing to lose. But, like, it is kind of interesting. It's like, congratulations. Like, you, ju- you are now facing, like, the far tougher opponent. And, you know, That's congratulations true. if you win this game. Yeah, like, I didn't think about it through that lens when I was going the Galbrain, like, fade route idea. But I guess, you know, you play – yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like they're a good I, team. I I'm, not, I'm not disrespecting them. Yeah, I don't think it's a Thunder disrespect thing. I think it's like I, – I just think it's the fact that we're – one team's the champion from last year with the MVP on their team, and they're just so much deeper and done that road before. The other one is this young, you know – bright-eyed, bushy table team that's never been there. And I think, you know, who who do you want who do you want playing the five? Uh AD versus versus Joker or AD versus the the bean pole of Chet? I know. Right? Like I think yeah, it's I mean, just... clearly clearly you want the you want the ticket, right? You want you want to punch your ticket into the yeah. into the dance, but man, that's that, that's just like such a shitty reward. <laughs> yeah. Um this is interesting. Bobby Stats say, don't think we've ever seen a team this young get to the finals before. I kind of agree. Like, I, I'm trying to think of one, maybe like those early LeBron Cavs ones, but they just bring down the median age because LeBron was so effing young. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, <laughs> I can't think of it. I mean, I think they're the youngest team to to, to take the first seed, right? Mm-hmm. I think I saw something like that too. Yeah, maybe Durant Thunder. That's a good shout. Durant Thunder with Harden and Westbrook. When Harden was still the sixth man, mm. yeah, these guys are on it. Andrew's on it too. Thunder, yeah, Chipsy's on it. That that was a good shout, guys. Yeah, so Thunder have done this before. If you they buy have, into not, team not, team not team context this. narrative, this is an organization organizational development plan. We always plan these young runs. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Uh. Wait, wait, wait. Gallagher just called called those people the dumbest people on the internet, and I tend to agree. Which ones are you referring to, Crutches? The people, the people that disrespecting that, that the Thunder? wants to win this game, I think. Oh, the people that nobody wants to win this game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. I, I don't think you ever want to leave yourself susceptible to a one-game, you know, in-or-out scenario. If you just win tonight, you buy yourself at least four games, right? And then you just let the variance of basketball take over. Right. So I don't think anybody would be like playing to lose tonight. I tend to agree there. Yeah. But like it does live rent free in the back of your head that if you make it through, feel like Thunder's an easier matchup than than Nugs. But I, I yeah, I don't think you would ever play to lose tonight. Um okay, let's uh let's talk about this next grouping. Uh do we expect full minutes from Trey? Because full minutes for Trey versus Chicago, I think you still put Steph here, but you could argue that full minutes from Trey looks better than Maxi. Uh, I could say I probably would suggest that the projection models are going to push Vooch like right about here. 
Um, I haven't looked at projections yet, uh, primarily because there's just one day of them out opposed to two days of them out. So it's just not as, you know, uh, I don't know, not as impactful, I guess. And then we have the, the playoff Jimmy, playoff Bam narratives to talk about where it's like, you know, they haven't done much for a month. They played Toronto two times in a row and both played like 20 something minutes. Like you get full Jimmy run and full Bam run. I mean, take the money to the bank because those guys are two different dudes in the postseason. And like, I don't know, something about something about Jimmy versus Maxi in the playoffs just has my bro science brain being like, give me the Jimmy side of that equation. Yeah, I have after Steph, um, Trey, then Vooch, mm-hmm. uh, and then Maxi, and I've been alternating between Vooch and, and Trey when I'm left with with those two, just kind of going back and okay. forth there. Um, and yep. then, and then I go Jimmy, and then and then Maxi. Um, I mean, okay. I think Maxi's being overdrafted here, but um, Maxi with with Embiid is obviously a lot of fun. Has you know a pretty pretty notable ceiling, but this, I mean, you kind of have to take a stand at some point in, in these drafts. I mean, you can't have everybody on on your team. Uh, you know, in, in your portfolio. So I think Maxi is going to be probably one of my larger fades in my in my exposures when it's all said and done. I like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I tend to be in lockstep with that. Uh, Sam also bringing up a really good point here, as the sharp are uh, tend to do around here. Never seen a team this young top five in both offense and defense for the season. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, we talked about this one a little bit at the beginning there. Not a hundred percent that AD is 100%. And maybe that's why LeBron took on such a big role, um, comparatively on the Sunday there. It's been two things for him. It's been the back of the back spasms. It was the poked in the eye. You remember the poked in the eye about a week ago? Yeah, he had that. And then he actually sat out a game with the eye. Um, it was a short slate for us. It was a dunking after dark two or three gamer that he ended up sitting with the eye thing. So hopefully that's come better. But uh, yeah, this is okay. The biz, I'm going to fight back on this one. AD has been one of the healthiest players in basketball this season. I know historically speaking, he gets the injury prone tag. He gets all this sort of thing. He's top five, or at least he was before this last week. When I looked, he's top five in the NBA in total minutes played. Like, he gets such an unfair rap. He has balled the F out this year. Like, I'm I'm going to push back on that one. He has been been playing through the Q tags all year. And people get a misconception because the Lakers label them with Q tags and probable tags every single night. And the East Coast goes to bed, and then they don't see that he plays 38 minutes after that Q tag every single time. Man, he was – he's at least top 10 in minutes played this season. So – Man, yeah. <laughs> you said it, man. I mean, he just completely, you know, showed out this season. It was a pretty good season, you know, by and large for um, these these typically injury-prone stars in, in playing basketball. Like Kawhi toward the end of the line there uh, had to sit out a few games, and, you know, who knows how healthy he is right now. But um, even Kawhi, like, playing back-to-backs. And Zion, too. Zion, at the beginning, it was like Zion's never playing back-to-backs with the foot. And then he played one back to back, and then the rest was history. And he played a lot this season. So shout out to the to the stars, um, yeah, that, that typically get a bad rap because they. It was a good, se- it was a very good season in terms of you know, uh, seeing the stars play. Do you think? Okay, to, to steer away from from the the draft for a second. Do you think that the new rules about having to hit that sixty five benchmark impacted this at all? Or is that a totally separate thing? And it's more based on the fact that, like, oh, the Lakers needed AD to play this amount of basketball games to b- even be remotely competitive, or that the Probably Pels both. just, yeah, you know, definitely, um, it was definitely a factor. The 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 award stuff, it definitely was a factor. I mean, you saw it with Halliburton early in the season, where like should not have been playing, but he was, you know, getting in because he needed to hit those, those benchmarks. Same with play in tourney. Like those are the two teams that played each other for the play in tourney and they pushed themselves early. 
both AD and Halley. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it'll be a fun little like research project in the offseason to see if that was impactful at all. The Zion one's a little different because losing 30 pounds made a world of difference for him. Is that what it was? It was 30? Yeah, I think it was... Yeah, maybe I was exaggerating, but like 25 to 30, something like that. I mean, you can tell yeah. he definitely looks better. Dude, he looks so much more athletic. He looks like his first year Duke mm-hmm. now, where it was just like Zion would carry the ball from his own free throw line all the way up make like three little kids miss and throw it down. One spin move, put him on his hip, and he was gone. Like, he was the fastest and biggest dude on the court every time down. Like, it was crazy. Anyway, Yeah, one of the best college basketball players ever. Oh, I fully agree with you. He was so fun to watch. Um, all right, this next tier here, Nez DeJounte, obviously the role has, uh, has taken a hit with Trey coming back there. Uh, we still saw 40-burger. From him last time out, 40 burgers in fantasy points, not real points uh, from him last time out. But we got some interesting muddled up stuff here because I think I put the BAM narrative up here, even though he's going to get the Embiid treatment and whatnot. But that could be a good back and forth and he could play some good defense, uh, like just good in terms of like defensive opportunities versus Embiid because Embiid has the ball so much in his hands. So I think the stock potential of a guy like Bam goes up on a night where the focal point of the other team's offense is a five. Yeah, I mean, well said. I mean, for me, simply Bam over DeJounte. Okay. And then I'd probably put DeJounte next. But Okay. Uh, some of these very interesting rankings in this next uh, pace-up spot for Kobe White. We haven't really seen like the ceiling game stuff from Kobe White in quite a long time, despite the minutes... Being there, uh, the scoring has just kind of distributed in other directions. I think I looked at something from from Winky's breakdown stuff. I think he's shooting less in recent memory, um, which makes this tier really interesting because if if there's no BI, you could tell me CJ here. With BI, I think I'm just going to go ahead and say, let me take BI. Let me. Last game was kind of an anomaly. 20 minutes to ramp him up. He gets 30, 33 minutes tonight. And we get almost full fledged BI here. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not. The fact that they still said that there's a limit, it's just like increased, makes me wonder like how real that is. But considering the fact that they can lose and still get in the playoffs, um, Mm -hmm. is definitely an interesting wrinkle. So this is a very tough range. Like it's definitely BI or CJ for me. And I've been mostly doing cj just because of like and this is like really bad analysis but sometimes it's how i break ties is just looking at adp and seeing that there's a three adp gap between cj and bi and you know i'm just kind of playing the adp game there assuming that like because i like bi and i have him ranked over kobe that like i'll still get some bi in my portfolio uh but Mm -hmm. for me it's like it's neck and neck but with with cj and bi i think they both have the ability to to have some you know some good performances and i guess you know saying this out loud makes me more confident in the zion stuff considering bi is likely not at full go based on the coach's comments like he's gonna play 30 but like Mm -hmm. how much more past 30 will he get and cj is you know this isn't anything new for cj like it is this season because he hasn't had that offensive um role really like when bi was there uh Mm -hmm. but bi leaving like he had to step up and he's done a good job offensively so you know does do they just completely yank that away from him uh against the lakers where like he can he can do damage so uh all that to say if i could if i knew for a fact bi was going to play like 32 minutes Mm -hmm. i would take bi over cj every time okay yeah, I, I think I'm in lockstep with you there. I, I think maybe I'm a little more scared. Now that you bring it up, I think I'm maybe a little more scared about the BI replacements. You know, just the fact that like Trey Jones and Herb Jones have been, pl- or sorry, Trey Murphy and Herb Jones have been playing so well, like in his absence, that it feels safe to go back to that Joval Jones, uh, Williamson, McConnell, and Murphy lineup. Like, doesn't that feel comfier than, like, who's going to lose ball handling and time on the court at CJ's expense? Like, they're not going to go to, like, Jose Alvarado, Jordan Hawkins, Dyson Daniels, like, something like that in a postseason game, 
right? So it's kind of like no matter how it breaks, CJ's minute floor feels safe. Yeah, I mean, he's going to okay. play a ton. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, cool. Yeah, so maybe playing the ADP game in that range makes a lot of sense. Um, this kind of next grouping, uh, I think Tyler Hero looks a lot better if Terry Rozier doesn't go. You could move him up a little bit. I alluded that I don't like Russell all that much because I don't think he's defensively good enough to stick around in the postseason, and we have a sample size of all of last year uh, for that reason. But you, you alluded to liking him. Um, I also just don't love the matchup for him on the offensive end either. Like I think on the defensive end, they just look to go right at him and run one run screen and rolls off of him and try and get him out of there and, and isolate Russell. And then I think on the offensive line, I mean, you just switch Herb onto him or you switch Murphy onto him. And that's an awful matchup for him to get shots up from deep anyways. So I, I don't know. I'm falling out of love with D'Angelo Russell tonight. Can you talk me uh, in the opposite direction? I mean, I just think he's a very important piece for them offensively. Um, right. he's, a, he's like a, another shot creator, um, another playmaker, a, a, a strong ball handler for them. Uh, you know, maybe this ADP is, isn't warranted, but I mean, at, at this range, like uh, Kobe White is probably next for me against Atlanta. Um, okay. And then after this, it, it's just it, it's pretty tough. Like, it, what's funny is if we see like if because like Austin Reeves outscored D'Lo like a good amount last postseason, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and a very good amount. See that, I think. Yep. Yeah, if we see that tonight, like the next slate, Austin Reeves is going to be drafted ahead of D'Lo. It's a hundred percent. So, what you're saying can very easily come to fruition um not to like put you on the spot but if it's not d who who are they who are they throwing out there uh gabe vincent for like 15 20 minutes like that sort of thing or you play like a bit bigger and it becomes like uh Rui reeves lebron 80 prince i guess he probably wouldn't put jackson hayes out there Maybe the Cam Reddish news kind of matters because you could play right. like you could play like Re Reddish and you could play like Reddish, Rui, James, A D, and Austin Reeves. Like you could play that, and that's a really big and defensively strong lineup. Um, I don't know what that the on off splits and what that looks like and if they've even run that a ton this year. I don't think they run like Dinwiddie over him, but it's not out of the range of possibility. But I'd say like Gabe Vincent kind of matters like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, Dinwiddie, 10 to 15 minutes. I think they can patch it together if they want to do point LeBron or they can patch it together if they want to run LeBron at the five because they don't think that like because the Pels are going to play a bit smaller with Nance at the five. Hmm. Yeah, like, I, I guess, don't think because because like the primary ball hand, you know, the primary scores for the Pelicans, I guess other than CJ who like maybe C maybe CJ gets Reeves. Um, yep. you know, is, is it going to be like Murphy or Herb with D'Lo on them? Because like D'Lo's not, you know, obviously it's not right. guarding Zion. Mm -hmm. So, I don't really have to worry about the Zion or BI matchups, but I mean the but obviously on the screen and rolls, that's how you get those matchups, of course. Right. So I think you're gonna see a lot of that. I, I think you're gonna see a lot of high side screen and roll with Zion rolling off and him playing a little less ball handling and trying to exploit the matchup of getting the switch to D'Lo. That's what I would do. That being said, point Zion has been so effing effective that maybe he is the ball handler in that situation and it's Nance running like screen and roll or Joe Val running screen and roll and Zion's the ball handler and then look out any which way he decides to go. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's a very fun matchup to me and it's very interesting that the Lakers beat the brakes off of them last time out. I know, and, and my heart, you know, as a Pelicans fan, as a lifelong Pelicans fan. Yeah, you're, my... you're as lifelong a Pelicans fan as I am a MILF. <laughs> <laughs> you are a milk. Uh, yeah. 
my heart tells me that the Pelicans are going to win tonight, and and I think they're going to win with like, and and, and I think it's going to be pretty pretty smooth sailing. But they're going to have to bat. I mean, they got to battle the Lakers and the refs. So <laughs> that's fair. Uh, if they win tonight, what does that basketball game look like? One ten to one hundred five. Like, what does that formula look like? For me, that looks like lockdown. If they if the Pels win tonight, it's because they went lockdown with Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, etc. Yeah, um, I think I think it looks like Zion taking over. And okay. yeah, and those yeah. guys going lockdown, and and I think it's a thrashing. Like every time, like every Pelicans game, they are either getting blown out or blowing teams out. And I think they blow a team out. Um, we got some news. I don't know if you saw it on your phone while we were talking. Uh, no, I don't have my phone. What's up? Uh, Rozier uh, ruled out, uh, which you okay. know, kind of expected. Yeah, so that makes Hero look a little bit better than his current ADP suggests. Like I would take <laughs> He's Hero. A yeah, I would take Hero over this tier. It's actually nice that you found that information. Because I was I was I was experimenting with Keegan Murray over this tier earlier. I was like Keegan Murray looks like a smash. Like that game's gonna play to a higher total, a higher pace. He can get his shots off against basically anyone on that Warriors side, and like he doesn't need a handling rule. Like he can just ice from the corner. And now Hero looks like maybe that same rule, but in maybe a slightly better spot and a little more handling. Yeah, I mean, D- Hero against the Sixers it has me intrigued. Without Terry, mm-hmm. like Terry was mm-hmm. doing a lot for them offensively. Yep. He was taking on a big role. I mean, he obviously hasn't been there for a minute, but mm-hmm. he was important. And yeah, yeah this is uh, th- this is exciting news for, um, for Hero. Okay, I like it. Um, this next kind of tier here, anything you want to say about Tobias, D'Lo, so we just put them in in order here. Anyone else you'd be vaulting out? I said I was vaulting up uh, Keegan Murray right here. Ooh, um, I like the Keegan Murray call. Mm-hmm. Th- this is uh, th- this is this is tough, man. Because uh, like, what are we gonna what are we gonna see from from Draymond? What are we right? What kind of Draymond performance are we getting? And. He's going to kick uh, Sabonis in the nuts and go home at halftime. Yeah, he's going to you know, Max Holloway him, just point at midcourt and be like, let's go. Let's let's just start swinging. Um, Square out, buddy. This is why basketball needs fighting, Des. We, we have, it, it all comes full circle. It's It, it, it really does. It really does. Uh, um, the thing, I guess, that like I'm thinking is what – like what are these games going to look like and will 35 points from Zion in the at the 3 at the 2 3 turn or whatever that uh, at the 3 4 turn um it mm-hmm. will that will that be enough like cuz like what his his ceiling is like what like 45 points you know yeah yeah um he needs he needs like three or four stocks he needs eight assists and eight boards to get anywhere close to relevant in your lineup yeah, because like yeah. Tobias Harris clearly has a higher ceiling like that we have seen, but like does that ceiling exist when they are at full strength and against the Heat when Draymond you know gets there differently, but can do it in a in a you know in a safe way like that thirty five like that thirty five is like written in stone for him against against the Kings, um, yeah, and then Tobias has the tougher matchup against Miami. Um, you know, but I think the these guys are just like perfectly placed, and and I think D'Lo has that same range of outcomes as well. I mean, I totally the bear case for D'Lo, like I that you've laid out, is scary, mm-hmm. and and I think that like Hero and Keegan over him, like is is the move, um, mm-hmm. but this next three I think would be D'Lo, Tobias Harris, and, and Draymond for for me, um, okay. and then maybe like Caruso can is is in this conversation as well. But with Io coming back, I mean, it doesn't affect them too too much, in my opinion. But it does kind of throw some cold water on on it a little bit. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting because like we have two legit Q tags here now that Terry's been ruled out. That the, the only two legit Q tag, well, three Cam Reddish. We're never going to play Cam Reddish, but might affect rotation. But the only the real ones are Io and and you know I love to go this Andre Dumman double big lineup. I don't think they play it against the Heat, but it does impact like maybe some secondary rotation stuff, which would be Io in the sixth round or Caruso's value relative to Io. 
um, just something to monitor over the next day or two there. Um, all right, cool. Um, any chance the Warriors go back to not starting Trace Jackson Davis and starting Kaminga now that it's the postseason and he's got you know a couple b- games back under his belt? Does the come bucket get home tonight or t- tonight? Yeah, I don't think so. No, no. I mean, based on everything that we've seen, like been wish casting a bigger role for him, like all, like all season. Um, mm-hmm. Like that's like playoff clay Thompson is like what I'm, what I'm excited for at, out of the Warriors. Okay. Thing. Love it. Okay. So clay would be kind of like next up for you in that range. And then anything else from the Warriors Warriors, like it's, it's just so hard because it's like, you know, we can get 35 from like five or six straight guys, but I don't know who's going to be the one that, that pops off. It's, and it's usually just the one who's icing shots from deep. Right. I mean, yeah. Are we getting to CP three? Are we getting to trace Jackson Davis here? Are we getting to what, what, what do you like other than, you know, clay and staff? I mean, I like CP3. Oh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would be surprised to not see, like, I don't, I guess maybe he's just like a liability, but for me, I feel like in the playoffs, we would, we might like see some big time CP three minutes. Like I think that would make a ton of sense. Yep. But obviously Especially when yet, but um, yeah, especially when Sacramento, we anticipate playing small, right? Yeah, I, I, I would think so. I mean, like, what are they going to put Trey Lyles out there? Like, okay. Right. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like that. I, I think Trey Lyles is just going to play like straight backup five run. I mean, there's no way there's any overlap with Trey Lyles and Sabonis. And I mean, yeah, against, against this lineup, especially when Draymond's like, not like a traditional big, if he stays out and plays like the five with like the second unit or something. Yeah. No. Yeah. Sorry. I was uh, trying to, I use, I've been using like the keyboard shortcuts to mute and unmute myself. And uh, oh, I, look I, at you, I, fancy boy. I missed, uh, I missed uh, actually hit save. I don't even know what I was trying to save there. So I had to quickly <laughs> get out of that pop up. But uh, oh, yeah. man. Uh, Nick talking about the next man up, Clint Capella. Mm. This, I feel like, is a narrative or, you know, a, a play that you can totally get behind. You got the size with, yep. with Atlanta. I don't think you're going to see your boy, Drummond, but. No. Clint Capella and like like how many minutes do you think Clint Capella will play in the playoffs? Uh, would play twenty tw- without Jalen Johnson to take any backup five kind of like stuff away. I think thirty one is definitely range outcomes. That's what I was thinking too. Like I didn't think that yeah. we would see him get like thirty six or you know like like other guys. Um, mm-hmm. But definitely interesting. Like like you said, like when you factor in the Jalen Johnson um, injury too. Uh, you know, it's a lot more five run for him. So this is another guy that like in this like Draymond type of scoring output that like you can expect. I mean, there's just a lot of 35s I would consider. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And certain builds, man, you want some of that like quote unquote safe floor in these middle tier rounds opposed to like shooting the moon on like Chase Jackson Davis, for instance, or or shooting the moon on on Reeves even to extent or Rui to an extent. Because if it does turn into D'Angelo night where his shot is falling and his shot is falling early, like those might be just like, you know, 12 to 25 fantasy points in your lineup in the fifth round. And that thing's instantly dead, right? 100%. Yeah, that's a decent shout like that. Um, Austin Reeves, if you want to bet on the that sort of thing. Uh, dude, Trey Murphy's been filling it up and playing some good ball in recent memory. Uh, you know, 42 minutes, 44, those were games without BI and, you know, 27 points, 24 BI comes back in this pseudo must win game versus the Lakers and his minutes dropped to 31 there. But, uh, you know, any interest in getting over the field, Trey Murphy or, or, you know, you could even throw Herb Jones in the later end of the sixth round there. I like, I like Trey Murphy. Uh, mm-hmm. Do I like him more than uh, Bogdan? Uh, you know, I can't like say that with, with any sort of confidence, but I am, I have been taking Trey Murphy over Bogdan though. Okay. Yep. That's entirely fair. Um, anything else? Uh, we kind of talked about Kaminga, Rui, uh, the Kelly Oubre one is interesting. What do we expect from Sixers in terms of like 
the Ubre healed uh, Melton, that kind of like melding pot of third slash fourth option, depending how Tobias Harris is going. Do we expect anything out of Ubre, or should we be getting a little unique by going, hey, Buddy Healed comes off the bench and fills it up a little bit, anything like that? I'm not doing Buddy Healed over Kelly. Okay. That's okay. Yep. Um, but I think next for me here is, uh, and like very clearly, is uh, Andrew Wiggins. Okay. Been- Playoff Wiggins narrative? Yeah. Yeah, playoff yeah. wins is always a real thing, and he's been—they've been ramping him up a little bit too. Um, I think he—he—he's—he fits this Warriors team better than than Kaminga right now. So I've been taking him over Kaminga in like all my drafts. I think, I, I mean, I have no stats in front of me. I have no nothing to back this up. If, this is bro science. I think the five best games Andrew Wiggins has played in the last two years all probably came against the Kings <laughs> in that in that playoff series yeah. to to open last year. <laughs> Might be right. You know I, like I I honestly remember like I vividly remember the dunk from the from the elbow <laughs> last year. Like just jab step rock step go dunk. I can't even remember who it was on. Probably on Sabonis or something like that. Met him at the rim kind of deal. But I, I vividly remember the dunk. And yeah, I mean, you know, he had all that family based narrative last year and then this year. Yeah, I think you're right in terms of them ramping him up and ramping Kaminga down a little bit. That's how I'm playing it. Okay, cool. I like it. Um, In terms of like some back end dart throw guys that we could talk about in the sixth round for the scroll the F down, shout out to the hat on top of your head. Uh, Terry's already out there. Um, you know, we talked about Trace Jackson Davis starting, you know, he's going to need some stocks or something like that. Um, but Sacramento, man, their rotation is extremely shallow. Their rotation is the most shallow out of basically every team on the slate here. So maybe going to like some Keon Ellis just for some ceiling scoring, uh, could be, could be something to get to here. Not, not that much different a bet to make on Keon Ellis than the Keegan Murray bet that you make in the fourth and fifth round any interest there for the scroll the f down you said cp3 earlier and then we'll talk about my boy nance uh ellis i i, I like Keon ellis but when, when you're drafting in the sixth then like like i would probably take herb jones over i mean i would take herb jones okay. over him uh yep. trish jackson davis it, it seems like very like his, I'm worried that he's not going to get a lot of minutes tonight, okay. but um, you know, liked him. Uh, I mean, we, I would definitely put, I mean, just cause we have these like rankings up, like I'm definitely putting like Rui and then those three Kaminga, Rui, Rui Kaminga. Uri. Yeah. I would probably yeah all over this team. Right, yeah. Yeah. Like right behind Wiggins. Um, and this is um, essentially my player pool. Like, no Harrison Barnes for me. Um, okay. Jaime Jaquez is, was a darling of mine early in the season, but <laughs> um, I don't know that I'm going to do that. But yeah, I think. Uh, and then Io, I guess, the Sumo. Yeah, the Io shout's good because even though he's missed a little bit of time, he is a high minutes guy and he basically always starts for them. So there's some love there. I would rather go the IO route than the Jaime Hawkes route. This might be a little bit of back box score watching from the recreationals. Both of those, you know, meaningless games versus Toronto, where they just basically ramped down Bam's minutes and ramped down uh, Jimmy Bucket's minutes, and then just let Jaime play. Um, right. You know, is there a path? Yeah, sure, there's a path, but no. Uh, the green ADP is kind of, to me, entirely hinging upon Io. And if Io doesn't go, maybe you can sprinkle him in in the sixth round. But if Io goes, I'm not touching green with a 10-foot pole, right? No way. No way. Okay. Just like, uh, you know, let him, get, get, him, get him via swaps if, it's, if, if it just so happens to make sense. Don't do don't anything right. crazy. Yeah, I like that shout. Um, any love back here for anyone else other than me singing the praises of Larry Nance Jr. in five seconds? Wax poetically, man. Let me hear it. Uh, okay, I just look at like the most recent must-win game and what they decided to do with matchups and that sort of thing, and I just see that they just don't love Joe Val. 
and they've never loved Joe Val. And they've talked about not loving Joe Val. And they've done everything they can to not play Joe Val. They, they've done the Cody Zeller thing in the past. They have done the, uh, the Joe Val starts, then comes off early, and we go to Nance. They've done this year, they've done the start Nance in the second half. They've done Zion at the five before Ingram was hurt, and it was uh, point Zion season. They have done everything in our, their power to tell us that they do not love playing Valanchunas. And I think we should believe them to an extent. And that doesn't mean, like, I mean, not a ton of people are even getting to Joe Val in these drafts, so it's not creating a ton of leverage. But I would just say that I expect the split at the five to be much closer to what we saw here than what we have seen in the past between those two. And I think projecting Larry Nance for, you know, 26, 28 minutes and to be the strong side of the center minutes flip makes a lot of sense to me because I think they know that every time they play Joe Val versus AD, he gets cooked. And I think they like the other side of that. That being said, in this very game that was, you know, in quotations, one of their must win or trying to win games, they got cooked by 20 and it was with Nance on the floor. So could we see a little coaching change, blah, 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 maybe. But I think they've shown us and told us enough in the past to suggest that Nance is going to play more minutes than Joe Val tonight. Yeah, I think that, the like, 100% more minutes. Yeah. Uh, from, a from like, a basketball standpoint, like, yeah. But I'm not... I'm not gonna draft Larry Nance. But no, I, I I don't think so. But when he made yeah, it like, 28 minutes at the five versus some backup five run, like I I th- maybe he gets LeBron instead of getting uh like Jackson Hayes off the bench or something like that. It's gonna be like a four four five one stat line, you know? Like <laughs> <laughs> like what's that like what's that getting us? 28 fantasy points might be enough to win in the sec in the sixth round. Like I don't like Harrison Barnes either, but I think I'd probably take Harrison Barnes over. Uh, okay. With that, yeah, that. Brad saying not to sleep on Harrison Barnes. The the, I mean, the thought process being he's going to play minutes. He's going to play minutes. He's going to play minutes, but like you can sleep on Harrison Barnes. Like <laughs> you can mix him in, but like you're allowed to sleep on Harrison Barnes. I pr- I promise, man. He's he's terrible. Like, yeah, so, I, I know he's going to play a lot of minutes, but like. I keep going back to the thought that the Kings are going to have the most condensed rotation out of any team, even though everyone's going to be running playoff rotations. But I think I'd rather take yeah. Dion Ellis. Yeah, I mean, who? because like, who's their, who's their bench? It's Trey Lyles. Yeah, Davion Mitchell, Alex Lynn. They'll never play Lynn and Lyles together. They'll maybe play Lyles and Sabonis together a little bit, but that would be probably be hinging upon Keegan Murray foul trouble, which did happen recently. And then basically everybody else is unplayable. Chris Duarte, good Canadian kid, shout out there. Maybe Sasha. Sasha gets a little bit of run. Um, but dude, like when you look at the Kings team, they are depleted without Monk and, and Herder. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. All right, let's rip some drafts. Unless there's oh. any other names you want to say that are going to make you sound smart, Nez. Nothing. Nothing that could possibly make me sound smart today. <laughs> that opportunity has passed us by. It's long gone. <laughs> are you what 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 Avi? Is this the new me, Avi? What are you rocking here? Oh uh, yeah, I, I had to switch it up after the we paid Tribute to T-Box, and then I just tried to copy one that was in our logo here. Yeah, it looks pretty close to the new me, except for with the snap, the Jack Settlement snapback headband. So my yeah, guy looks like a ninja. Shade blue, different shade of blue, too. Okay, yeah. I can't believe new me, does, I don't even think new me rocks his uh, OG avatar in the admin streets. It's like he's completely just forgotten his they get They get custom ones with his face, and he's just smiling with thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Give me that. Um. All right. So I imagine Nick's going to take MB. This is a friends and family draft here with Chad, John, uh, Johnny Footballs, T-Box, Truck. 
always always mess up fracas 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 um yeah friends and family right here i imagine Embiid goes one and rightfully so just because it's Embiid and he can do so much with so little even against bam um then kind of like this next year we're gonna have that anthony davis decision are we in lockstep with the anthony davis decision now that he said he'll play tuesday that doesn't matter at all that's two days ago <laughs> i mean I, I i think right i mean i i, I don't know man I'm, I'm 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 not gonna over overthink that one i guess okay sounds good to me he said there's no doubt he said there's no doubt that's what he said his wording yep uh, we're going to get a new injury report in 13 minutes. It's nice to be doing basketball slates where we don't really care about them. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Uh, and Anthony Davis on the site does in fact have the, the red, you know, or the green, you know, he's playing for sure. One on the official M- NBA injury report. As of right now, uh, he is still listed as questionable. So both him and Cam Reddish are questionable on the official NBA report as of 2.30 Eastern. And LeBron, and then LeBron has the probable tag. Like, so, why even list him probable? Yeah, it's just evergreen with them, man. Who knows? That's just so annoying. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just fucking say he's playing. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, I uh, did I save rankings at some point there when we were doing this? Um, I didn't That's intend to do great. that. Let's work. All right, here, let's do this. Then we'll go back to the draft. All right, Nez. Vooch, DeJounte Murray, Jimmy Buckets. Uh, I think Vooch. Okay. Let's do it. Playoff Jimmy's going to be annoying, though. Is there... Yes, playoff Jimmy is definitely going to be annoying. I think people are apprehensive to do exactly what Nick just did in front of my eyes. I was going to say pair Jimmy and Bam together. So if you flirt with the guy on the corner, sometimes you can get him to drop one of the Heat guys to you. Um, But uh, it looks like Nick's too smart for that. He's playing that overtime. I see him. (laughs) Yeah, he's playing that game stack. Uh, DeJounte, CJ, Brandon Ingram. Wait, DeJounte? Yeah, DeJounte feels best of the bunch. I'm not going to lie. I know, man. I just can't. Like, I know that all those ceiling games are without Trey, but I just keep thinking about those 50 burgers that he was just putting up yeah. nightly. And he's a good UW boy. Come on. Of course. Yeah. You don't think a good UW boy is going to show up in the postseason? I got news for you, buddy. <laughs> We be scrolling, Ben. We be scrolling. Don't you worry. This team's ending up with Larry Nance on it. <laughs> yeah, I want nothing um, about this. <laughs> Nez doesn't want his name attached to this team. No. No, 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 no. Um, Johnny Football is taking Keegan Murray there. T-Box takes Tobias Harris. There is the Tyler Hero new ADP being set by Chad at 19. Uh, now with we got with the Rozier news. That's probably closer to his true value. Uh, Caruso, Clay, Clint. Is it officially Clint Knight? Uh, Austin Reeves. Uh, who do you like, Nez? Oh, man. This is this is a tough one. What, what What's your lean here? I think I like Clay or Clint. Oh, oh, I mean, I like Reeves too, but we got AD. Kind of feels like ceiling games aren't tethered. Let's go Clay. Clay? Or did you say yeah. Clint? Sorry. Either or. Oh, shit. What happened there? Oh. Wow, I I clicked the star. You hate to see it. Both of uh, our and guys. then Clayton Clay goes. Yeah, perfect. Uh, um, I don't like the Caruso ADP. I think the Caruso ADP is is baking in the fact that that we think Io is out. I don't love it comparatively. I would I would rank those next two ahead of him there. Uh, I I think maybe now Reeves. I like Reeves, man. Like playoff Reeves, yeah. I think like he just feels very safe. We're gonna get a ton of minutes out of him. You know, I I think he has forty in his range of outcomes, which would be agree, very man. very big. I agree. Now, oh, good. Scroll the f down. Shout from Brad here. Duncan Robinson now probable, so that does come into play 
uh, potentially cutting into Hero, potentially cutting into, you know, it just just another guy that we know is going to be in the rotation. So that was an upgrade? Yes. Gotcha. They have not filed because they don't have to officially file. Hmm. So, like, if you look at the official report, they don't have to submit, so they're not actually submitted, but, yeah. Interesting. Okay. That's a that's a sneaky one. It might be kind of defaulty for people to swap off Rogier to him, but um, yeah, yeah. I got I got a lot of Rogier. I mean, I don't have a ton of drafts done right now, but I know I've got a lot of Rogier. So, um, not a bad thing to have right now. No, no. At the, at those prices, no. I I wish I had more hero though. Mm. That I that I'm. Uh, Pretty Damn, long. Keon Ellis. Dang. Um, Kaminga comes all the way back here. People not buying the fact that he's going to have an expanded rule. Uh, Wiggins already went in this draft. Uh, Trish Jackson Davis or my guy Lance. A little bit of a game stack. A little bring back here, Nezzy. Expand. Let's look at those box scores. Oh, 30 base, minutes. 28. Let's 30 go. minutes. Let's go. Not bad. Kyle Lowry. Any Kyle Lowry love? Mm, playoff Kyle Lowry. Revenge game. Who uh who was actually we didn't take talk about the revenge implications of the entirety of, <laughs> of everything. We, yeah, this is Re- a big blind spot. Yeah, revenge, revenge game for Brandon Ingram. And AD now facing their former teams in the playoffs. There, what a huge trade! There, yeah, AD revenge game. Yeah. Got to give him that extra boost now. Makes does that yeah. make one on one for you now? <laughs> no. How much? How much of a bump are we giving? The revenge bump couldn't bump him over Embiid. Um, let's rip one more of those, Nez, and then let's do a draft of the the. Um, why, why am I blanking? Uh, the dance. All right. That'll yeah, we'll, we'll, work out. yeah. The one thing I wanted to look at just before we do the dance, it guys go back, watch the Chipsy stream. It's really good. Um, but, uh, the one thing I want to talk about kind of that, like we haven't talked about yet in terms of like, we've done so much macro strategy, you know, game stacking one-offs, like, that sort of thing. Um, Blake saying they need one more for Zamboni. Jump in there. Ooh. Somebody get in there and help them fill a Zamboni. We will be talking about Zamboni tomorrow. But yeah, one thing I want to talk about to you, Nez, is like now that we're going to kind of know some of the matchups or know some of the potential matchups, can we start getting a little gal brainy with like what teams not to pair together and that sort of thing and then get a little leverage that way because we're not going to get leverage on the combos anymore in the dance. Because we know there are going to be, you know, the, the last dance we did on stream, I went back and looked, Nez, that you and I did together. Uh, or maybe it was me, Paywall. I, I can't remember. But the last most recent dance I had done before the ones I did this morning was uh, an Embiid plus Joker team. Like, that that dream's dead. Like, that, that's gone. You know, Denver plus uh, Boston. That dream's dead now, right? So we got to start thinking about some creative ways to build smart, intelligent teams that then have one-offs that can push us through. Um, all right, Nez, LeBron James, Sabonis, Fox. I think. I mean, it's LeBron, right? I mean, okay. I, I, I know Sabonis. We talked him up, but I think it's it's LeBron. Dude, why are my stars not clicking? Might have been really laggy as well. Huh? Yeah, Maybe that's right. why we missed our previous pick. I'll give it a refresh here you've got to start physically pressing these buttons mm-hmm. oh. I'm trying to look back at some of these old teams I have um, man so much Julius Randall yeah uh, Trey Vooch playoff buckets Like I said, man, I go back and forth between Trey and Vooch, but I think Trey, since we just did Vooch, right? Sure. 
Lollipop Sucker. <laughs> Brad saying after Lefty Killer's revenge game for something f- five years ago is one of the <laughs> Five years revenge game. People don't forget. I like it. People don't forget. Um. All right, Nez. CJ or BI? That's a yeah. That's tough. This is this is this is a sl- slate defining pick. Let's flip the board a little bit and let's do the BI stuff because I can't help but scroll and have a good time. Yeah, we'll we'll get your scrolling when when we can get there it. You go. Um, yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna be mixing those two up. That that that's a that's such a tough tough decision. That mm-hmm. that pick. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Chip saying that Denver and Boston are falling in some rooms, so some of those old combos may actually be available now. So knowing a little bit more of the playoff picture actually leaves people, um, you know, leads people to do to, to getting more creative. Wow. Uh, Delo comes back to us if we want it. Seems like, seems like we take it, Nez. This is the time. Yeah, if you're going to take D'Lo, you may as well take it a couple spots after ADP and pair it with LeBron instead of pairing it with AD IMO. How many days um, have you done, by the way? Not that many. Like six or seven or something like that. I'm a fraud, dude. I just play <laughs> baseball. <laughs> hey. I'm, I'm up to 64. I've been working. Oh, wow. Good for so, you. God, man. I have so many bad teams, though. Let's do, let's do, we could either do Onslaught with Reeves here or let's do Playoff Wiggins. Oh, man. I think Playoff Wiggins, I guess. Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. Let's do it. Because I want, I want to do Reeves, but that's, I don't know how good that is. To have three Lakers on the same team and two of them kind of overlapping roles. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, I guess that's like if- the perks of pushing the plane. Having yeah, like, it is. You don't. You don't even like think about that. You just like mm-hmm. just do it. Yeah. Dasumu. John. Fine. John Max One Contest Challenge. I'll try BBM this year. I will try my best to max BBM this year. That that can be my one. Um, I did try my best. I genuinely tried my best for the dinger. I love the dinger. I tried my best. I got to ninety eight or whatever. I tried my best, guys. How how are your advance rates looking? I dude, like I would look. Come on, Multi- they're gonna look great. I have... <laughs> we can look in a second. Okay, Rui Ubre. Let's do Keon Ellis. Ellis feels like a ceiling pick in the last round comparatively. Who... He's gonna give us forty-five, or he's gonna give us twelve. Who's who's announcing the game on TNT? Is that... who's... Is it like are we gonna get a Mike Breen bang for Keon Ellis tonight? Bang! Uh, if it's TN, <laughs> if it's TN, if it's TNT, you're definitely not getting uh, Mike Breen because he's ESPN only. Ah, uh, so we yeah. probably get Reggie Miller's dumbass like Keon Ellis. Where did this guy come from? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> That's basically what we're gonna get tonight. We're gonna get that. Worst. We're gonna get we're gonna get shacking a foo or shacking around or whatever at the at the intermission. That's, I'm, gonna, that's what I think. I'm gonna download a chip only version of our stream and just listen to that while while I watch <laughs> the games instead of having to listen to Reggie Miller. I love that. Oh man. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think Ellis has a relatively high floor. No, he uh, does. Given that he's gonna play 37. I, yeah, he's, man, not, he's not a bad true, six. Man. Not a bad six at all. Yeah. And I would take him over Harrison Barnes. They they like him too, uh, man. They the um when I was lo- watching some Kings broadcast towards the end, end of the season this year, um I mean obviously he had to step up and play a lot of minutes, but like they're really talking up Keon Ellis. Like they they really do like him as like a as a bench guy. You know now he's uh-huh. starting, but um <laughs> you know they yeah they really but like him. they fully flipped him and Davion Mitchell, so that's got to be a ringing endorsement. They like the think, fact right? that yeah. like yeah. When Monk and Herder first went down and stuff, it was like they were doing some Davion starting and that sort of deal. And now it's kind of like he's played himself into relevancy. Yeah, I, I like him. You know, I, I just try not to get like to double count guys because like I have affinities for them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. But that's that's the only reason I play these games, Des, is because I want to have 
my personal opinion vested in these, right? So Brad comment here before we jump in saying King's defense for fantasy points has been legit. I'm assuming he means like good, right? Like they've in been in terms of allowing, or they've been in terms of being like they've been good in terms of like the defense has actually been good, or they've been That's... good for fantasy. I've noticed that the Kings have been like playing better defense. Mm, okay. And I wonder if that's what he's referring to. Okay. Give us a little more context there, Brad, please. And thank you. Um, okay. Yeah. See, I'm taking strays in the chat here. Bro. These aren't that's even strays. These are, that's a direct shot. But TA says no shot on 150 BBMs. Okay. Underdog. If, if the good people are listening right now, higher, lower with the spice in the Pick'em lobby, does Bad Bro John get to 150 BBMs? Set the line. Put it out there for the people. I will get the shit home. Lower. <laughs> Still taking the lower without the spice. Lower, lower with, a point, with a point seven multiplier. <laughs> That's probably a fair. That's probably a fair one to set up there. Oh man, <laughs> can see will travel to a legit state to hit that. No, that's so good. <laughs> Under one fifty is like four. Oh, I guess Blake's got confidence in you. I guess. Oh man, he's 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 got me. Uh, yeah, right. defense has been good. Brad saying, yeah. so Kings Loki improved, which makes me like. I mean. We were talking about rotations that are going to be tighter and what whatever. Like we might get playoff minutes out of Steph and Clay and that sort of thing, you know. But like they got a lot to spread it around and a lot that they can change if things aren't going right, you I know. know? It's a shame they're not healthy because they really have been like turning it on and like that was obviously like their biggest issue is like they can't play defense for shit and uh, mm -hmm. it really did seem like they were like turning it up. So I don't know, man. Maybe they have a chance, but. Mm -hmm doesn't seem like i mean they're they're free in the dance uh which uh speaking of yeah speaking of um okay so the new meta obviously two things here bobby stats put it in here one of the biggest edges he thinks with the dance right now is building two teams so 10 live players in the second round and avoiding first round matchups so we don't definitively know all the first round matchups Nez, but that effectively means like not pairing clippers and mavs t wolves and suns not pairing Bucks and Pacers not pairing Cavs and Magic, which I kind of accidentally think we never would have done. Right. I mean, I think, yeah. I think I'm think I'm safe. What I, what my big problem is, and like it's it's technically fine, maybe even good because they're on opposite sides of the bracket. It's like I keep getting Pelicans and Lakers. I keep mm. accidentally doing both of them because like I'm building out my East team, typically like the Celtics, and I'm like, wow, like. Who do I want in the East? Like, who do I want in the West? Like, Thunder are gone. Nuggets are gone. Suns are gone. Timberwolves have no wings. Mavericks have right. no wings. Like, I'm just staring at Pels and Lakers who have LeBron, Zion, and B.I. Like, you know, it's just I, what I always end up doing. I think that's a full-fledged representation of lack of wings if you don't take the Clippers in the West. Right. You know, like, as your backstack West team, who do you feel comfortable taking wings from thunder and Clippers like nuggets go early and I don't want to pay the premium on Gordon and Porter unless I'm building out, you know, three plus nuggets. You got to have um, Jokic. You got to have Jokic or Jamal like to do that in my opinion. Yeah. And like, yeah. I don't, if I didn't have Jokic, I would not like be drafting uh, like, you know, like I've done some nuggets teams, Typically with this, like if I'm building Celtics, like just trying to get, get that one, one matchup, you know, mm -hmm. between nuggets and Celtics, like no one's going to have a good team with that pairing. So I'm like, let me just like try it sometimes. If I'm not doing that, like, and you, and it's a nuggets final and you go into the, you go into a nuggets NBA finals in the dance finals without a Jokic team. You have no chance. You're dead anyways. You have yeah. No chance. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the only way you could do it is if you had Embiid. Like, you know what I mean? The only and way you could do it is if we got Sixers and Nuggets final. And you know what's fucked up? What? Those Embiid teams are going to have Jokic. 
Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Cause you're going to have teams like we built on stream where there's crossover between nuggets and, and Sixers. Um, yeah, draft Paulo in France. <laughs> oh, he's forgetting. He's forgetting the third. I mean, there, he's third? not a wing, but I mean, our, oh, our boy. Jonathan we take Isaac? Jonathan Isaac. <laughs> the Patriot the greatest summer league, the greatest, <laughs> the greatest summer league player I've ever seen. John, are you familiar? Have uh-huh. you seen Jonathan Isaac's minutes in recent memory? Before he got hurt, he got hurt though recently. Oh, yeah, like not like not like hurt hurt, but like he got hurt. Oh, he did. Let's click a dance and find out. I'll do this too. But they started to ramp him up, and then something happened toward the end of the season. Two more spots in the dance. He just played on the 14th. He played 26 minutes against the Bucks. Okay, never mind. I'm drunk. It's fine. I'm an idiot. Scare me like that, man. 27 minutes against the Sixers. They're ramping them up. They're ramping them up, man. Are you ready for 30 minutes of Jonathan Isaac in the playoffs? Are you ready? Honestly, it'd be sick. It'd be so sick. It's happening. It'd be fun. It it has to happen. It has to happen. I like it. Like, he is... He's he's a legitimate X factor. He's an X factor. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wait. Okay. We roll this three hole where it's pretty interesting on your decision, man. Like yeah, Luca all of a sudden is a one oh three and Chip laughs at us for taking him in the one two turn a couple weeks ago, or a week ago. Right, yeah. I think the Mavs really ramped up their stock toward the tail end of the season by avoiding that play in, going on that hot run, their defense being low key one of the best in the West now. Like that was that was not on the table. Uh, you know, three months ago, two months ago, when this contest first dropped two months ago, nobody thought the Mavs were going to be good defensively. And then all of a sudden, they're the best defensive team in the West for the last two months. They're good, man. We, yeah. we saw the vision. We saw the vision immediately. Immediately. Um, all right. I, I want to try something. Uh, we'll see here. I want to try the I want to try the OKC SGA buying on the young guys stuff. I think they're easy to back stack, and I think they have wings a bit later that we can get to. What do you think about building OKC out of the West to start? Yeah, I, I love building OKC because like you okay. always get like they're they're the pieces for OKC like line up perfectly mm-hmm. um, for you where you don't feel like you're reaching too much, and they and they just balance out your lineup perfectly where you get giddy late. Obviously, you know, J- uh, J-Dub and Chet, I mean, they're just like, it, it, it's, they're, they're so easy and they're the mm-hmm. ones in the West. So, yeah. And, and I mean, like whoever they get is not going to be as hard as the Clippers. Yeah. Uh, like, sorry. Ozzy Albies just broke his, he has a broken toe. Oh, that sucks. That's unfortunate. Damn. Are we going to see, yeah. you know, you know, what's going to happen though, is we're about to see Michael Harris, like Michael Harris hit second. Yeah. Yep. That's 100% what's going to happen. Michael Harris is going to look a lot better now. This is exactly what happened last year. Yep. Ozzy got hurt, and then they moved up Michael Harris in that two-hole. The other one, I, I don't, not to pivot to baseball too hard, <laughs> but did you see our guy, our guy, by proxy now, after having Kravis on the show and him having the tattoo, our guy, Kyle Freeman, fuck the Rockies forever, bad team, stay bad for a reason. Did you see him break his arm last night? Yeah, I, I apparently they didn't have anybody to pinch run, but like, why do you need to pinch run in the first place? I didn't understand that context. Right, like, you just have, don't. Then they're ridiculous, man. They're yeah. absolutely ridiculous for that. And, and if you're gonna pick pick someone, don't pick the ace of your staff to run. Pick pick. Oh shit, we're on the clock. Um, the Giannis decision. I'm not sure he's ever gonna play basketball. Um, I don't want to do Boston. What do you like, Nez? Do you just do Chet and figure the rest out? Bro, I was going to say you do, do Giannis. You want to do Giannis and just Bro, hope the Milwaukee newest, gets... The bullish. Okay. What's the latest? Is that like they think he can come back for that round one? Dude, what? No, I read preparing to be without him for round one. 
the beginning for the start. Uh, okay. Like they didn't rule them out for round one. And okay. And they are facing the Pacers, who the Pacers are like, that's not a good matchup for them. I mean, I don't know who's a good matchup for the Bucks. Really, nobody. But mm-hmm. I mean, with, with that, Pacers, with, with the, you can just build a disgusting Thunder Bucks team in, in okay. these drafts. Okay, let's do it. Uh, I, I will remind everybody that the Pacers, when they were playing for real and everybody was healthy with Giannis in the middle of the season for the play in tournament, the Pacers beat them twice. They did. I mean, little, get it too. I mean, they got a little bit of a rivalry. Yeah, not to be results oriented here, but that they, they beat them twice. I don't know. That seems that seems kind of important. I so yeah, it's still tough. All right, so we take Chet and we push Dame, right? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. You have to. Yeah, because you're fine. You're fine if Dame doesn't fall, but like you need him. Right, but you need Chet more. You need Chet more because the bigs that you can take, like we don't want Splash Mountain to be like our only big here. And then the push through bigs from the, because like OKC is going to be the foundation of this team. The push through bigs we could go to from the East don't look as safe as they once did because the heat have to play the Sixers and going to bam feels worse now than it once did. Mm -hmm. Um, We can't get the Randall wing stuff. They split the five between uh, Hartenstein and Mitchell, so you don't really want to take like, you know, one or two man Knicks teams. Uh, yeah. And Cleveland feels bad. I mean, maybe you could go the Mobley route. You could go like Mobley and and Spida. Cleveland Magic is just like such a hilarious first round matchup, I mean, is it not? Like it's I love like, that one of those teams are going to the second round. I, I really truly love it. I I tend to agree with you there. It kind of like throws a nice wrinkle in things. I I think everyone and their dog just thinks it'll be like the Cavs no matter what kind of thing. And it, so there it might be some leverage in getting the Magic. Yeah, because like is but, like is Donovan Mitchell healthy? Sort of. Like, right. Kind of. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's going to let him know because he's Donovan Mitchell. He's going to let him know. But uh, I was talking to some people at the Mavs game there, just, you know, random strangers as I'm prone to just talk to people. Um, yeah, perfect. So Dame comes back to us here, and we we make good on this Giannis team. Giannis with the OKC stack to start here. Is it important to get Middleton next? Is it important to get some one-off, you know, good players here? Or is it important to get J-Dub? You need J-Dub. Okay, cool. And I think we'll get him because Sun007 uh, knows what yeah, he's doing. He, yeah, he's a good drafter, stays in his lane. He's, what's, what's he thinking? Because he just got sniped on Horford. Okay, so he's pivoting. All right, J-Dub it is. And they then what's... Kyrie the, ball, but you had to. Yeah, we, we, yeah we, we're setting up for, for the monster stuff. Like, if we get OKC versus Milwaukee finals, like, that, this this slaps right here. Right, and I mean, like, at this point... So, if you just type in Bucks, I mean, just to throw them in the queue, like, we'll have Middleton and, like, Bobby Portis is, like, the, the other Bucks to add here. Um, like... I, what do they do for this team unless we pivot with like Lakers or something too? You know what I mean? Where it's like four bucks and now we are adding in like an, an, an uh, another West team that the bucks play. Or do you just say like, forget Bobby Portis and Chris Middleton on this team. But like you could use maybe Middleton in the first round though, because you're not going to probably get a, a starting score out of Giannis for the first round. That that's the, that's the caveat I was going to throw you there as well and i i think we're in lockstep there talking about the boxes like you the difference in talking on like the auxiliary pieces of like boston and and um and denver is like you're not gonna get game changing first round scores especially on shorter series that push you through you could get game changing push through scores from middleton and portis 
because they're playing in a fast paced up tempo environment and they're playing full minutes without Giannis. So they become way better clicks in my opinion than some of the auxiliary stuff. That being said, do we take Middleton first, obviously then here? I think, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, sorry. Just thinking through this. Um, Definitely, I, I think so, man. I think I think this yeah. is Middleton. This makes sense for just having another out for a startable piece in the finals and getting pushed through. Uh, now, I would typically do Giddy, but like, are we are we doing too say, much? Yeah. No, I think Giddy's fine. I think Gig Giddy and Bobby Bobby Portis are fine, and then with that, two. yeah, with the last two spots, we can either do two one offs because we can. We can if we do two one-offs, we can field. Yeah, we can field a five-man in every final. Final if we do two one-offs, we just have to be smart about the one-off choices. Right. Yeah, we do. Because okay, so so we take Giddy here, and we've got four KC. And we add one Eastern Conference one off to it. Would you do Jimmy first? Yeah. If he wasn't in a playoff play in game, okay. maybe. Like, why take Jimmy here and risk losing Giddy when we can take Trey Young in the last round? Isn't it the same bet? Like, obviously, Miami has a better chance to make it through the play in series than that but isn't it the same bet question mark um i just think of uh like having extra stability at wing it's the same bet as far as probability goes but for what it gives to this team breaking out of the first round i think i would rather have jimmy okay all right might have fucked up there i think we're okay though because like man playoff middleton is going to gonna do numbers and like we if this team's gonna beat the pacers like dame is gonna have to ball like crazy i mean no uh-huh. one's got the ball like crazy so and like you said it's a really good environment uh mm-hmm. so we might we might we might uh you know get a nice break here and get jimmy on the way back just to, just Who? to help push us through because we have Who? a luxury pick and, and no one's gonna take bobby portis who are the nutted one-offs from either side right now for us? Um, it's Brandon Ingram and Jimmy Butler, is it not? Probably, yes. Yeah. But then uh, you have more wings. So bonus is like another like really fun one-off as well. Because like with yeah, so, one big, it gives you another chance. And based on the playoff bracket, basically Sacramento can't... Oh, uh, no, they could meet him in the first round. They the, could meet OKC in the first round. That would be the only way. That's the only way. So Sabonis is probably no good for us. Probably. Like, I mean, it's probably not. it's good for scoring points and as a push through, but you need them to go like five or six games. Yeah, I is guess there the, anyone less the feedback from, loop? But like, because like there they, anyone, they're playing good games, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 the series goes longer. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Are there any okay, let's think here. Are there any good like D'Angelo Russell doesn't do it for us to pair with our Bucks thing, but he's probably available. T Wolves, everyone's gone. Suns, did Beal go? Beal I mean Beal uh Beal falls. Fucking sometimes. Bobby Portis, Bobby Oh, that's gross. Wait, go back. Did somebody take him? Yeah, Bobby Portis went. We're on the clock here. Brandon Ingram as another wing or Sabonis. What do you think about a Heat player with with Jimmy? Worse than Sabonis. Let's take Sabonis as a one off. That felt gross. Damn. Bobby Portis, dude, with Brooke Lopez. Yeah. Now we can fall back on Hero late. I don't know. We gotta sauce I, that I, team. We gotta sauce that team. Well, imagine, oh, oh my God, four bigs too. Fuck off. Um, so the, the, 
I was thinking it was going to be so much worse because I thought Joker would be the one zero one. So Joker being the one zero one and then doing double big Portis and Lopez feels so gross. So he's got. Okay, man, your Suns and Bucks finals where those Suns and Bucks teams are going to have Giannis with KD. Yeah. Okay, we got to think who our last one, our last. Yeah, that sucked. That's unfortunate. But we got to make good out of this situation. So we got three Milwaukee and... So Milwaukee and OKC may, making the playoffs or making the finals is the nuts. It, even if Sacramento somehow made it versus Milwaukee, we're live. But it's only we can only field four in those spots. OKC versus Miami, we're good. OKC, I think we just take a one off in the East. There's not a lot of good East one offs. Uh, is the problem? I've been I've been in this situation before. Okay, then how about this gal brain? Oh, no, we'll lose two players in the first round. I was like, you take Steph, and then doesn't matter who's in the play-on game yeah. between Sabonis and Steph. Yeah, because you just to get guarantee that. you one being gone is definitely not the move. Yeah, it's definitely not smart. I mean, we could do East one-off. To Rosen. Rosen, another like wing, games, but like we're so thin at big now. Fuck, losing Portis and Lopez was insane. That was the most ridiculous those, move I've ever seen. Oh my God. Either of those fallbacks would have been fine because now we're so thin at big with just Chet. We got Damn. Boner. Yeah, maybe Hero was smarter. Hero might have been smarter there, or Robinson. I mean, would Hero so like in our Bucks Heat final, or not Bucks Heat in our Thunder Heat final? Mm -hmm. It would be SGA, Chet, J Dub, Giddy, and yeah. So I guess Hero could maybe outscore Giddy, but yeah. yeah. So maybe the Giddy pick was the screw up. And we should have just pushed Giddy and been like, nobody's going to build out OKC with just Giddy as the last piece, even though his ADP is higher. So we could have taken Zion as our West one-off for the Bucks side. Hey, no, nah, it wouldn't have mattered. We would have just had to take Portis or Brooke Lopez earlier than we did. So maybe leaving... Maybe just not taking Portis was the mistake. We should have put the condom on it and been like, yo, take Bobby Portis and just guarantee we have 4-4. Four, four. I'm still okay. Yeah. Like, you push Bobby Portis every time. Like, okay. what are the odds someone goes rogue yeah. there? You know, like... Yeah. Um, yeah, Chip's right. The, 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 I mean, yes, Chip. I, this, is, this is a byproduct of streaming and all our plans went out the window and then we just clicked a good basketball player. That's uh, the, the Demar picks bad. I mean, we are hoping that this OKC series goes six or seven. So, like, that's going to give us like a flex and a big, probably. Anyway, from Sabonis so. and yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what else was I saying? Bob, Bobby. The nice things about the Bulls getting in is if the Heat win and the Heat get in, and then the Bulls beat the Sixers and get in. We're live, baby, because they won't play each other until until the Eastern Conference Finals. Man, that's sharp. Love it. What are you guys talking about? Love it. Uh, it's Sam like these guys haven't even looked at the playoff picture, Nez. <laughs> Look at this. All the Bulls have to do is just go right here. Heat just win here. Look, the arrow is already from the Heat with a W beside it. So the right. Heat are already going. So we got Jimmy Buckets down here. And then we're going to push this. The Bulls arrow right there. And then the Bulls arrow goes up to here. Bulls beat the Celtics. Easy game. DeMar DeRozan, never DeRozan, is the guy you need. Perfect. <laughs> Sam I have this exact point, team, uh, but with Sam. Portis over Butler. So you just have the slightly better version. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I had something similar, too. Um, yeah. But, like, the Sixers, man. Like, the Sixers 
just don't feel good to draft right now. Really? I'm fine with it. The Sixers? I think the Sixers could cook the Knicks. Well, it's the, the Knicks are a problem. And, like, let me pull up, like, one of my early drafts. Like, I'm just trying to see, like, how far, like, Joel Embiid was falling at the beginning of this contest because, like, I'm looking at a board right now where he's picked three. <laughs> Rod Goodrick thing. He just, first second for after him joining John's explaining why DeVar's a guy you need to win the dance. We're so back. <laughs> oh, my We're God. Back. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, like these, some of these <laughs> Sorry, Joel Embiid teams are gonna be fucking nuts. Yeah, man. Like, oh, well, here look, we can just look at because I've I've done you know limited volume and everybody knows that, so I ain't afraid to mess around and share. Um, <laughs> like I'm looking at like Beast Burf has a team that's like absolutely ridiculous. He's got Luca, Kyrie, Embiid, Maxi, Harris, Gafford, PJ Washington in this room that he did with uh, me and Nick, like, wow, just a ridiculous team. Yeah, that's sharp. I mean, okay, here's, here's a Joker and bead team with all you sharp guys in here, Joker and bead, Aaron Gordon. And then Maxi comes all the way back uh, with LeBron. So hopefully they get in the playoff playing game. D'Angelo Russell, because AD, I guess, didn't make it with LeBron. And then Ubre and Melton and just went hammer Sixers, so it's it's not that great, but like it's still Embiid plus Joker, etc. Yeah, like Embiid is like like the Sixers are a lot of fun to draft because like there's a lot of West Wings that you can pair with them, and it feels super super easy. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, I mean you're probably drafting. A tenth place team, right? You yeah. know, like, right? It's, it, it, it's, it, that's like one of the like grossest dynamics right now is is the the Embiid fall that took place. Fair enough. McKay suggesting patting us on the back and making us feel all warm and fuzzy inside by thinking Portis would made it too concentrated, too consolidated. There, that's Thank what you, we needed McKay. to hear. That's exactly why this team needed Demar Derozan. <laughs> I'm still fine with it. Uh, diversity is the spice of life. Nez said, "Me, only me." Michael Scott and John Warner. Um. All right, Nezzy, you want to tie a bow on that, or do you want to rip one MLB draft for the people, sight unseen? No talking about the slate. I'm ready. For what? That didn't answer the question. <laughs> So I, you like cut out. I thought you asked like. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I'm ready. Oh, I, yeah. I was like, God, I hope I hear him right. <laughs> For what? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Oh man. Um, so I got you now. <laughs> watching that NBA draft. You might need to do some research for tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks, GA. Oh man. <laughs> Ready for anything. Ready for anything. I'm ready. I am ready. <laughs> oh my god. That was not the that was not the question. Um, did you do Nez takes today? No, I'm doing that tomorrow though. Uh, we're, okay. we're trying to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, okay, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on the Nez takes. Some baseball stuff will be out uh, there, yeah, just said I'm down. No idea. <laughs> yeah, <Yo, yo, laughs> happy to hear that. Or sorry for your losses. That was for, that was the Nez equivalent of like that meme. Um, all right, we got that twenty five dollar frozen rope in there today. We got the seven dollar tune Tuesday. Uh, pretty big slate today, is it not? Uh, I forget how many games there are, but it is. I think it was like, I mean, yeah, when, like, when the highest total game on. Or, mm-hmm on the slate is like undrafted. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a pretty big slate. Ooh, interesting. Which game is that? Uh, Arizona and Cubs. Wow. Very interesting. Okay. I've not been in the MLB streets yet today, but, uh, I'll be there in an hour or so. How about that? 
Yeah, man, it's a good one. Uh, pitching, once again, doesn't matter. Uh, so oh. do whatever you want. Praise no, me. no Tyler Glass now to trick us into taking him yeah. with the first overall pick. Uh, <laughs> man, CJ Abrams, good ball player. Who would have thought? Yeah, man, CJ Abrams coming alive, dude. I, I, I actually, uh, so I was on the tarmac yesterday, and I, I, being the sharp guy that I am, forgot to download any podcast before I was going on the flight. So I'm quickly using like a one bar service LTE to download, you know, before I get on there. And I just in the nick of time, I was able to get the uh, baseball is dead one, uh, get Hayden and Josh's football one, and get uh, Eno and uh, Van Riper's uh, rates and barrels there. And they were talking about, you know, evaluating players as like stats that like age and grow as guys physically grow. And they're like, we use these dismissive things like the barrel rates and exit velocity. And we don't account for the fact that these kids are going to grow and they're going to get better and they're going to develop. And like people were dismissive of CJ Abrams, like pop and pop potential because like he had low exit velocities compared to, you know, some other prospects and stuff. And now all of a sudden at the start of this year, the exit velocities are popping and he goes lefty, lefty home run to the deepest part of almost any ballpark on planet earth. The verse Kyle Harrison uh, into triples alley at whatever they now call um, the, the giant stadium. It was no, it's not Oracle anymore. That's why I would always say Oracle. I thought, it's Oracle now, or it used to be Oracle? I thought it... Um, oh, it's now Oracle because it's the same as the basketball stadium. You're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah, Oracle. Yeah, because yeah, it was called... Oh, man, I, now I can't even remember what it used to be called. It's like Seattle. Like, I just still call it Safeco. Wasn't it AT&T? Right? Yeah, it was AT&T. Exactly. Yeah, it was AT&T. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, man, like, it, I was just like... I saw that, and I was like... Holy shit, that's legit pop to get it out in that spot, lefty lefty versus that. And then they talked about it more about you know how he's developing. So the fact that you yeah. brought him off right off the hop here, like you know going against Glass now last night, this this guy's a ball player. So yeah, shout out to you because some of my only C.J. Abrams shares were because I, I didn't like taking him on stack and like stuff like that, and I didn't like the back stack options. So some of my only ones in the dinger are because of you. So yeah. Glad I could do my part. Oh, um, I can't do that with this shirt on, man. It's stolen valor. Apologies. Stolen valor. Apologies yeah. to all those. Yeah. Apologies. I'm gonna to wait a little bit. Straight. I haven't. I'm keeping my advance rates close to the vest because I'm running. I'm running too hot. So I need to. I need to give it like another week before I divulge where we're at because I don't want to tell everybody and then like, oh, where are you at now, Nez? And it's like, um, a little average. But we're we're running really hot right now. So I'd venture to guess I'm running really hot right now too. Because just the, based on player exposures, uh -huh. that I have zero percent Strider. I actually have one share of Spencer Strider. I have like two or three shares of Cole, but they were all like past round five. Um, I had no Shane Bieber, literally zero percent. Uh, and then all my outfielders are smashing that I was highest on in Trout, Jordan, um, Tyler O'Neill, Christopher Morrell, dude, and Haniger. You might be like like 40 percent many are saying many are saying dare me to max a contest guys you do not want me to max a contest you just want to steal my plays and max <laughs> said contest <laughs> i've got my fingers crossed too because like you know i don't know if you like i hate saying like running pure on injuries but like i've been like fortunate to like i've, I've been dodging a ton of mm -hmm. a ton of these injuries right now but that that can that can change on a dime so it's still yeah, super early. It's so early. Yeah. I mean, like, we're, we're barely a month here. We're, we're pushing a month, but it's barely a month. Um, all right, Nez, let's have a on it. Guys, do us a favor. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe, that notification, all that good stuff. We'll be back with you guys tomorrow with the, uh, with the uh, Morning Skate podcast, doing some Zamboni stuff. I know they prepared uh, a, a trivia kind of thing to start the show, so they're going to embarrass our hockey knowledge. Right off the jump, but uh, oh, hey, man, buddy. we're puck guys through and through, and we're going to prove it tomorrow, so that'll be fun. We'll do uh, some, some Zamboni drafts alongside them, um, but do us a favor. Please keep liking, subscribing, all that sort of stuff. We never ask throughout the show and stuff like that, and that might be a flaw on, on our part, but like it genuinely keeps us like alive and coming back, 
So please, please uh, go ahead and do so on your way out the door. Um, tomorrow is a special start time, though. Um, we just had to move some things around to get everybody in the building at the same time kind of thing. It's 12 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, so it's a little bit earlier than usual for everyone. Um, sorry for that, but also that's the only way we could have got the show done. So uh, deal with it. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> any any parting words to uh, close her up, Ness? No, I'll see you in the lobbies. There's too much to draft right now, and I'm trying to get it all in. Damn right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go do some hoop stuff now and do some MLB stuff for the rest of the night here. So on behalf of Nez and myself, everybody's favorite time of the show, the end. Peace. Love you guys.